Okay, um, so we are doing lesson 1.2, um, expressions with exponents. And so um, we're going just more into rules of exponents here. Um, so let's look at this first sentence. If a power is raised to another power, multiply the exponents together and keep the base the same. So over here, instead of this being, um, so this would be like you're squaring two to the third. And so when you multiply those exponents together, you get two to the sixth. Same as right here. If an expression is raised to the power, do not raise each term to the power, but rather consider the expression as a whole. So, um, and we talked about this when we talked about that fraction being raised to a power. Um, it's the whole thing is being squared or the whole thing is being raised to that power. So it's two plus three times the expression two plus three. And so that'd be five times five, which is 25. Same as down here. Um, so if an expression does not have an exponent, there is an implied one. And that just a reminder that um, a base raised to an exponent of one is itself. So just as we said that, um, so 105, there's an implied one here and any number raised to the first power is itself. Ooh, and then if a product in parentheses is raised to a power, then each factor is raised to the power when parentheses are eliminated. So let me show you why those are equivalent. What they did here was they used that rule that you can just um, put a power on each expression that's being multiplied. Um, let's do it the other way, the way that's up here, just to show you that these two things are gonna be equivalent. So I have two times four, all raised to the second power, two times four raised to the second power. So instead of raising each term to the second power, I'm gonna multiply this expression and then square it. So two times four is eight, and then we're squaring it, and eight squared is 64. Mathematically, these methods are both equivalent, and so that's why this works. Okay, so now we're down to the examples portion. And so let's go ahead and start with number one. So we have two to the third, all raised to the second power. And so all we're doing is raising this power to a power. So I'm going to multiply the exponents and we'll have two to the sixth. Down here, we can either write this as three squared times five squared. This would be 9 times 25, which would be 225. Or you could do it the other way, where you multiply what's inside first. So you have 15 squared. And then 15 times 15 is 225. So either way, that works. This is a combination of these two rules. So we know that a coefficient in front of a variable means that this three is being multiplied to the x to the fourth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it where we square everything being multiplied together. So first we have three, I'm gonna rewrite this as three times x to the fourth, and then all squared. And then I'm going to square my three or raise my three to the second power. And then I'm going to raise x to the fourth to the second power, which is x to the eighth. Then lastly, we simplify that. So I don't need these parentheses anymore because I already, um, I already raised them to the second power. So now there's nothing for the parentheses to uh, imply anymore. So three squared is nine. And then x to the eighth is just x to the eighth. And you sh your answer should be nine to the eighth. Um, real quick, if you need to remember what you do when you're raising a power to a power, think about this three right here. This three that was over here, that was technically three to the first. So three with a one as the exponent. If I raise each term to the second power, I made that three squared. Three, this two is the same as one times two. So always think of raising a power to a power as multiplying, and this kind of shows you how that worked, and again over here. So we are doing the same thing on example four. We are, these two are being multiplied together, and so I'm raising each term to the fourth power. So this will be two to the fourth, 
times a to the fourth and two to the fourth is two times two, which is four times two is eight times two is 16. So I have 16 a to the fourth. Number five, we have one minus two squared. We're gonna write this out this way. So I have one minus two times one minus two. It's the entire expression, one minus two times itself. If we simplify the expression in each set of parentheses, one minus two is negative one times negative one. Um, can you have an exponent on a negative number? Yes. Um, and I, th I think we'll talk more about that um, in a future lesson, but just know that you can for right now. Negative one times negative one is positive one. And so your answer for number five should just be one. Number six, five plus one raised to the third power. I'm just going to simplify it first. So five plus one is six, and that will be raised to the third power. And so we have six times six times six, and that should be 216. So we have this entire expression raised to the third power. So I'm going to raise each of the terms to the third power. So I separated them by showing that they're being multiplied together, but they already are. I just this notation just shows you, hey, they're being multiplied together, but we already know that because when you write a coefficient in front of a variable, you know they're being multiplied together. Four to the third, we're just gonna write that as four to the third right now. And then that's gonna be r to the seven times three. Four cubed is 64. And then r to the seven times three, that's going to be r to the 21st power. And so your answer should be 64 r to the 21st. We have four times four cubed, and we know that four cubed is four times four times four. So if I were to multiply another four in front of it, that's actually gonna be four to the fourth, and that's gonna equal 256. Number nine right here, we have two times three to the third power. So I'm going to multiply two times three. That gives me six raised to the third power. And as we saw over here, six cubed is 216. So again, this entire expression is squared or raised to the second power. Four plus one is five and five plus seven is 12. So we have 12 squared and 12 times 12 is 144. Again, we have this entire expression cubed. I'm gonna solve this inside and then raise to the third power. So five minus nine is negative four plus two is negative two. That's raised to the third power. You'll notice that on this one, I kept the parentheses for the negative two. The reason why is because if you just see negative two cubed, that actually means that we're taking the opposite of two cubed. If you have a negative number and you want the whole negative number raised to the third power, then you have to put parentheses around the whole thing. Otherwise, it's assumed that it's just two cubed and then make it negative. But we have negative two cubed, and so negative two times negative two, I'm gonna write that out here so you guys can see it. Negative two times negative two is positive four, and then times negative two is gonna be negative eight. And then lastly, you could add all these together and then raise it to the zero power and get one. Or you can just look at this and say, oh, everything is raised to the zero power, so it's one. I don't have to solve anything. If I see an expression to the zero power, then I know that at least that whole expression is gonna be one. Okay, so in conclusion, here are all of your examples. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you're doing well, I hope you're staying safe, and I hope you're staying healthy and um, just, you know, doing the best you can with what we have right now. I uh, will see you soon.